Hi, thanks for joining us at the Australian Institute of International Affairs. I'm Chris Farnham and I'm here today with Mr. Dong Manyuan from the China Institute of International Studies. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Xi Jinping, President Xi Jinping's One Belt, uh, One Road economic policy. Thanks very much for joining us today, Mr. Dong. Could you please give us a brief explanation on what the President's policy is of the One Belt, One Road economic, economic policy? Uh, uh, briefly, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, China's development, China cannot develop its econ uh, economy or to realize uh, Chinese dream alone. Mm -hmm. China needs the cooperation with the whole world mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, China has a broad shared interests with the whole world, that is to combine the survival and the development of interests with those of mankind. Mm. That's the basis for China to take the road of peaceful development and uh, seek a win-win results on the win to all. Uh, so on the such background, China President Xi Jinping uh, initiate, uh, put forward the initiative of uh, One Belt, One Road, that is uh, uh, jointly uh, built uh, Silk Road Economic Belt uh, alongside uh, the European uh, Euro-Asia continent and the maritime Silk Road in 21st century, uh, which uh, the goal of this is to realize common uh, development and common prosperity uh, for the countries along the belt and the road in particular, and open, also open the door to all the countries. And uh, it will lay some emphasis on the, the following connectiveness. For example, the policy communication, that's a, a kind of connectiveness, mm -hmm. and financial and currency connectiveness, infrastructure connectiveness, people-to-people uh, -people contact, that is also a connectiveness. Uh, so uh, in this regard, I think uh, China's cooperation uh, with Australia and New Zealand it's a natural extension of the Belt and the Road Cooperation Initiative because uh, the cooperation between China and Australia in field of uh, infrastructure, infrastructure construction uh, are very important. Mm -hmm. This may be, uh, I, mean, I mean, there's a potentiality for the uh, accommodation between the two countries' economic development strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told that uh, Australian government uh, made up uh, their decision to uh, develop the infra uh, infrastructure in northern Australia, uh, including uh, seaport and uh, other uh, in structure, uh, infrastructure uh, facilities. Uh, also, we should s uh, deepen our cooperation in the uh, field of uh, uh, resources, uh, renewable energy, and uh, agriculture, and uh, uh, animal husbandry, and, uh, and so on. Also, we should uh, uh, put more resources in the field of people-to-people uh, -people uh, contacts and friendship. So I, I agree. As Australia has mm -hmm. been looking to the, mm -hmm. the Northern Development Plan, mm -hmm. looking towards the development mm -hmm. in Asia mm -hmm. and how we can capitalise on this development. Mm -hmm. And uh, New Zealand has also mm -hmm. benefited greatly from its trade mm -hmm. relationship with mm -hmm. China. Um, getting back to the, the One Belt, One Road policy, mm -hmm. the, the One Belt looking at, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, the Silk Road development mm -hmm. 
mm. through Central Asia mm. towards mm. Europe mm. and the maritime development mm. uh, through the maritime mm. Silk Road. Mm. Um, it seems to be a, a very ambitious mm. plan mm. for the region. Mm. Uh, it's, it's quite a step forward in China's relationship mm -hmm. with the region. Does that does that suggest that President Xi Jinping, with his new policy, mm. uh, has a different view from uh, the previous Chinese leaders, or is this a natural development mm -hmm. in China's growth within the region? And this is a continuation, say, of the uh, policies mm. uh, between uh, every Chinese government and uh, every Chinese leader mm -hmm. since China uh, launched its uh, economic reform and mm -hmm. opening up, uh, up to the outside world. Mm -hmm. uh, because the crux of this uh, policy is to uh, seek a common development mm -hmm. with both developed countries mm -hmm. and developing countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, I mean, it's a very, very natural uh, mm -hmm. from because uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, before, I mean, the, uh, advocate, advocation of the, this uh, policy, we already had some uh, solid basis to initiate mm. s such a cooperation uh, proposals. Yep. Uh, for example, uh, China already become very important trading partner with Australia, Absolutely. with New Zealand. China is the first trading partner to ASEAN countries uh, in general. Mm -hmm. China also enjoys uh, the status of first trading partners with countries like uh, Japan, South Korea. Mm -hmm. Also, we are the first trading partner with Russia and a very important trading partner with uh, Central Asia countries. Mm, absolutely. Mm. I'd like to now draw on your expertise mm. in the mm. Middle East. Mm. Uh, and in recent years, China has been the victim of some very horrible mm. attacks mm. linked to uh, some extremist mm. movements. Mm. And uh, we see the rise of Islamic mm. State mm. Daesh in, mm. in the Middle East. Mm. Um, China, like other countries mm. like Australia, mm -hmm. has seen some of its citizens mm. go to mm. fight alongside mm. some extremist movements in the Middle East. Mm. Uh, what uh, policies or plans and strategies does China have mm. in place to combat the ideology mm. of extremism mm. taking hold mm. within its own nation? Mm. Uh, I think uh, the effective the approach to deal with uh, the radicalization mm -hmm. of some young people uh, which uh, uh, finally uh, give rise to the phenomenon of uh, uh, extremism mm -hmm. and terrorism is to encourage through the international cooperation uh, the dialogue mm -hmm. between and among different civilizations. Mm -hmm. uh, and also should uh, pay special attention to the common development of various countries in the, way, in the world because the development is the general key to, the, uh, to address the issue of extremism and uh, terrorism. Uh, I, I believe that uh, both China and, uh, and Australia are victims of extremism and uh, international terrorism. Uh, the ca two countries should uh, deepen the cooperation in this regard. Uh, in fact, China opposes international terrorism in various forms, no matter in what name or under what kind of banner or uh, behind what kind of motivation. Uh, China uh, engaged in very good cooperation with major powers and international community, uh, both, uh, I mean, in the uh, framework United Nations, including the Security Council, also built up very good cooperation with the major powers like United States and Russia. For example, the cooperation 
between China and the United States uh, in dealing with the so-called Eastern Turkey stand Islamic movement. Mm -hmm. uh, through the joint efforts by China and the United States, uh, United Nations Security Council passed resolution to enlist this terrorist organization into the name list of uh, the foreign uh, terrorist uh, groups mm -hmm. by the Secu Secu Security Council. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, simultaneously, State Department of the United States also enlist Eastern Turkey Stan Islamic movement into the name list of uh, foreign terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. For the cooperation between uh, China and Russia, uh, we also uh, engage in cooperation in fighting against religious extremism, mm -hmm. uh, ethnic separatism, and the international ter terrorism, uh, both uh, on the track of bilat uh, bilateral track and the framework of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for that. And thank you for joining us mm -hmm. today for a wonderful mm -hmm. discussion. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us at the Australian Institute of International Affairs. For more information, please visit our website at www.internationalaffairs.org.au.